Right, so welcome everyone to this new video where we discuss physics uh, and mathematics uh, on the board. In this video, we are going to apply some results that we had uh, in a previous video where we introduced the notion of Christopher symbols. And here we are just going to apply it uh, to the simple general uh, expression um, of the velocity and acceleration vectors uh, when we express these things in terms of polar coordinates, okay? Um, so that's what we are going to do today uh, via the Christopher symbols. Okay, so um, again, uh, in a previous video um, that I have flagged uh, at some point before, or maybe just now, um, we have seen that um, uh, essentially, there are multiple representations we can use when it comes to representing like a position vector, for example, or a field. And um, because this is simply linear algebra, you're free to use kind of whatever basis uh, you want. And what happens is that in some cases, we can use a basis that depends on the coordinate system that we use. So what that means is on the components of the position vector we use, at least if I want to use that terminology. Uh, here. And so uh, what that means is that uh, we have here uh, a circle that is characterizing this kind of polar coordinate system where r is the uh, length or magnitude of the position vector. Uh, so basically telling you, you know, how far from the origin the position of the point you're looking at is, um, and then a particular angle uh, with respect to some fixed um, x-axis is given by the angle theta okay and and from there you can essentially express uh, the position vector as being either in cartesian coordinates and cartesian basis um, x ex plus y ey or you can say well no this is simply r and then er um, of theta so uh, once we have done that what we had seen was that you can uh, define a polar uh, basis and this polar basis of vectors is um, actually local. So what that means is that, as you can see from the orange uh, kind of pair of vectors, I don't know if you can see well, uh, essentially the ER here is aligned uh, in the direction of the position vector. So if you were to move that position vector, the ER vector would be that way. Okay, and likewise E theta is always tangent to the circle. Um, and perpendicular to ER. And so if you want to obtain something like this, you need to have both vectors that depend on, on ER. Now, what we had seen is that we can introduce the notion of Christopher symbols that simply say that um, taking the derivative um, of a vector can be expressed itself as a linear map. And consequently, you can express that linear map um, as um, basically something that acts uh, or that can be ex expanded upon the basis vectors themselves, um, ek. And um, these uh, numbers that are like, again, uh, that are called gamma, i, j, k here, uh, essentially are what are called Christopher symbols. You can view that as a sort of array uh, of numbers. And in our case, it turns out, so in the case of the polar coordinate system, we had seen that there are only two that are non-zero. And the gamma of theta r theta is actually plus one, and gamma of theta theta r is minus one. All the rest is basically zero. Okay, so let's see how we can use that. Of course, you could also perform derivatives and so on, but here my whole point is to show how we can use these things without having to perform the derivatives uh, yourself. And in, in fact, often in advanced uh, kind of differential geometry, that's how this is worked out. This is worked out um, actually um, uh, kind of via the uh, Christopher symbols rather than by explicitly taking the derivative. So uh, it just depends on where you're coming from. So let's try to have a look at how we would evaluate the velocity vector. So the velocity vector, just as a, def as a definition, is going to be v. That's going to depend on time, um, and uh, and this is by definition the um, time derivative 
of the position vector. So what that means is that you make the coordinates x and y actually be functions of time. So it's a sort of parametric equation or parametric system where x and y depend on time and you would plot that with a, let's say, parametric um, um, you know, um, function or something to, to plot on a computer, for example. Um, so, but let's see how that the, how that goes. So, I'm going to start from there, and and basically say, okay, um, if I apply the product rule, then here is what I'm going to get. I'm going to get that this is dr dt er uh, of theta, and then because this depends on theta here. I'm going to have, uh, sorry, it's not an equal, it's a plus because I'm using the product rule. Um, I'm going to have plus R and then D of uh, ER and then DT. And this ER here depends on theta only. So what I can do, therefore, is basically say, well, okay, this is R dot. That's the name I'm going to give to DR DT or to any kind of time derivative. It's a bit easier and more compact. So that's, I'm going to call that R dot uh, ER. And then plus R. And here I'm going to use a chain rule. And the chain rule, I'm going to use it in the following way. I'm saying that this is D theta DT. And then uh, I, I can write it this way just for to, to get closer to what we had. D ER. Uh, d theta. Okay, so then I can uh, basically write this uh, over there and continue. So v of t is equal to, so I've got r dot er, and then I've got plus r. So again, I'm going to call that theta dot. It's like d theta over dt. So the time derivative, I'm going to call that the dot operator, if you will. And then I've got d er d theta. And so because they are all zero except for, for one, actually what I'm going to get here is basically uh, times gamma. And then I've got, in principle, I need to sum, but here there is basically almost nothing to sum, really. Um, and that's going to be theta r. And then the only one that is non-zero is actually uh, r, is actually theta. Uh, if you want, you can do that this way. So that's theta e theta and then if you if you want to do it kind of uh, completely you can have theta uh, r and then r e uh, r okay so that's what you would get in principle but what we know from what i've uh, summarized here is that this guy is actually equal to zero and then this one here uh, is equal to plus one so what we have is basically um, r dot er plus r theta dot, and then we have simply e theta. I mean, I know that some people would say, well, that's obvious, etc. But again, the goal here is to do something that is obvious, but to treat it via, uh, via the use of Christopher symbols and to see how they would be used used in a in a simple setting. So that's for our uh, V here. By the way, what you notice here is that the uh, part here, which is in R theta dot, um, so basically that's what people would call R omega um, E theta, comes from the Christopher symbols, okay? So it comes from the um, uh, time dependence and coordinate dependence of the basis vectors. So it's also interesting to see um, in this particular velocity vector, what comes from the direct time variation of the coordinates and what comes from the variation of the basis vectors themselves. So that's the first uh, kind of result. We've got the velocity. And then what we need to, to do is to look at the acceleration. Hopefully, I will have enough space. So the acceleration A of T, by definition, is equal to dV um, over dt. 
And so here I need to use the product rule and I need to be very careful because here I've got product of function already. So I've got simply one function times one function and both of them need to be differentiated using the product rule. And here I've got the product of three functions. Okay, so I need to be a bit careful with what I'm doing uh, here. So um, in the end, what we have is um, the following. So we, um, um, yeah, let, let's actually put it here. So we've got A is going to be equal to, so I've got R dot dot ER, then I've got plus R dot, um, and then let's put it this way, uh, R dot theta dot DER D theta. Then here I've got plus r dot uh, theta dot uh, e theta. And then I've got plus um, r, uh, r dot, okay, r theta dot dot um, e theta. And then I've got plus r theta dot. Uh, here I'm going to get a, a, a theta dot coming from the derivative, from the chain rule. And then I've got here d of e theta, and then d uh, theta. Okay, so uh, basically here I've got uh, uh, so far I've got r dot dot e r. Then I've got uh, plus r dot theta dot. I can express this derivative in the way I've expressed uh, it here. So I'm going to get uh, gamma. And then that's theta r and then theta e theta plus gamma theta r r e r. Uh, this would be like, you know, so it's the only kind of possible ones. We already know kind of what are our values. Um, here I've got uh, some other stuff. So r uh, dot theta uh, e theta and then plus r theta dot dot uh, e theta. And then here, I've got something uh, that is kind of new. Um, so plus, and then that's, that would be, uh, maybe I can put it slightly below. So r theta dot squared. And then here, the uh, gamma that I have are theta theta. So I can put theta e theta, and then plus gamma theta theta, and then r, and then er. Okay, so then what I just need to use is essentially what I did above. So I know that this is equal to zero. This is equal to plus one. We already did that. This one is equal to zero. And this one is equal to minus one. Okay, so now the only thing I need to do is basically to put this uh, back together and I get that the acceleration and I need to try to factorize things a bit okay so I'm going to look at everything that is factorized by er so I've got r dot dot and here I'm going to get minus one times r dot uh, squared and I think that's the only part that depends on er and then we need to put together the parts that depend on e theta, so plus. And so we are going to get um, r dot theta, r dot theta dot plus one, so e theta. There is already one here, so we've got a two r dot theta dot. Um, and then we've got also a plus here, so plus r dot, uh, sorry, r theta dot dot. And all of that is uh, times e theta. Okay. So basically, that's uh, the expression that you have for the acceleration. And we obtain that here. Obviously, we could have done the calculation right away by taking the derivatives and so on. But here, the goal was to use the Christopher symbols to do that. And you see that this is not complicated once you actually know, well, obviously, the, the, their values. 
once you know the ones that are equal to zero, and so you can basically write that as a simple sum uh, that with like a few terms that are non-zero or potentially non-zero, and basically kind of move on with it. Okay, um, so that's really um, the idea about this technique, and uh, otherwise, uh, what we are going to, to look at in subsequent videos is how this is used when we look at general uh, kind of fields. Here we look at the position vector and velocity and acceleration, uh, but it can be looked as well uh, when we look at fields, and, um, and this is used to define something called the um, covariant derivative. Um, and so this is something we are going to look uh, a bit later. Uh, I, I, I just need to figure out whether I want or not to introduce some, uh, some preliminary material uh, first. So this is something we'll see uh, as time goes. Um, so if you've got uh, any uh, questions um, or comments, uh, by all means, um, do let me know. And otherwise, see you in the next video.